switch and charger. Hello YouTube land. Um, as uh, you may have seen I've been trying to work on the Floyd Sweet VTA and uh, one of the key things that he had was a special way that he conditioned, he called it, conditioning his magnets. Um, so I've been experimenting with uh, magnetization and I found it's really tricky to get the right amount of uh, voltage and current into a coil without blowing the coil up or melting it um, uh, and uh, to actually magnetize, to get it to magnetize. But I uh, finally got it, so I wanted to show uh, uh, how it was done. So right here, this is a uh, voltage charging unit transformer with the bridge rectifier to get it to DC current um, and then a spark gap switch so the electrodes never actually touch the, in the switch it's just connected via a spark um, this is the charging unit green light indicates that it's on and ready to fire um, flip this switch to engage the charging unit and you can set your level right here so if you want 5000 volts or whatever you can see this relay switches in the back there um, when you um, reach the level that you set it at. So if you want to charge up to 1000 volts you, you can set the the uh, um, potentiometer to that. If you want to charge to 5000 volts you just set it to 5000 volts and it will charge up to that and then stop and hold the charge there. So um, and then that goes to this capacitor bank uh, and you can use whatever uh, size capacitors these are some larger uh, like oil can style ones. I switched to the uh, electrolytics here and I have uh, three 450 volt uh, 1500 microfarads ran in series so three of those would be 1350 volts and 1500 microfarads each and you lose when you put them in series um, so you lose uh, capacitance so it drops down to about 500 microfarads per row and there's six rows so it's 3,000 microfarads at about uh, 1,350 volts so these are all ran in uh, um, parallel once, once they have that so and then that gets discharged into the magnetizing coil right here and there's a little uh, just this on the side just a little inductor um, with about five winds so it's basically transparent to the rest of the current, but it gives enough of a, or the circuit, but it gets uh, enough inductance to help the uh, energy get transferred into the coil. So the so you basically put whatever you want to magnetize inside the coil. This is a bifiler coil. Uh, I'm not using the second windings right now, but this would be where you would carry your frequency. Uh, and then the second winding would be to carry your uh, DC uh, current to magnetize and that would hopefully like imprint the frequency onto the magnet and so this is six winds in parallel so I have uh, 50 winds going up um, six times in a row going out and um, yeah I used a bunch of these SCR switches as you can see and um, I kept blowing them every time they're rated at 1400 amps and 1200 volts but still at that uh, when you discharge the capacitor bank into those even half of the, these amount of capacitors uh, they have now uh, it would blow the SCR switch so that was the tricky thing but here's the result uh, I did this last night had um, so this is just regular ferrite cores. They're not magnetic, but you run them through the magnetizing coil and you run the current through there and they become extremely magnetic, as you can see. So that's that. Um, and let's see where we're at. We're at about 700 volts. So. Let's give her a go. This is a, a meter as well. I just have the other meter up there to verify the voltage here. Turn it on. You're ready to go. 
and throws a spark across there. Hopefully the camera caught it. And uh, dumps all the load or the uh, energy from the capacitor bank into the coil. And no explosions, no melted wires, everybody's happy, and we're making magnets. So, uh, one challenge I have right now is the second coil, secondary coil on the bifiler windings. Uh, when I do run a frequency through here, um, the it induces an e, uh, uh, EMF, uh, I guess, across the second coil winding, and that goes back into whatever's driving the frequency. And like I, uh, I think I fried that little guy there, um, the radio frequency carrier uh, that was driving a, a frequency going into this, and uh, I think it pushed the once I dumped the energy from there into here, I think it pushed push it back into that and fried that thing. So I try to use a, um, just like a, you know, a audio amplifier or something to see if I can get a, um, something as a buffer in between the, what's driving. Because I don't want to fry the, uh, the um, function generator here. Um, so I'm going to be testing the different frequencies at it. So that's where I'm at. If anybody has um, any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. And uh, I have enough parts left over here after building this thing to build about uh, two or three more of these. So if anybody uh, is interested in having me build one, uh, definitely could work something out. So, um, Or if you're interested in building one yourself, let me know, and uh, I'd be glad to help you. So feel free to leave any comments uh, below, and hope you guys have a great week. Bye-bye.